All right, here we go, boys and girls. Welcome back. Uh, this is uh, statistics assignment 1.2. Um, this is a continuation of sigma notation and sigma summations. Uh, so again, if you uh, are a little bit hesitant about uh, what sigma is, again, sigma is this Greek letter right here. And what it does is it takes a number set that you have with it, like one, two, three, or something like that. It takes a number set, and what sigma does is it takes these inside answers and adds them up. So this would be one plus two plus three, kind of like that. Um, and so that is what we did on the first assignment. What we're going to be doing today is we notice that instead of just one singular number set, that we have multiple number sets that we are using at the same time. All right. So multiple number sets. Uh, so we not only just have an X, but we have an X and a Y. And so how do we operate with two number sets at the exact same time? All right. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll kind of teach it as we go along. Um, so first one is summation of X. So I notice that the inside is just purely X. So this is in essence a summation of four, one, four, seven, five. Okay, not, not too bad. So those are already the inside answers. So four, one, four, seven, five is 21. And then make sure you are actually showing some work. Uh, don't just answer this with a straight up 21 and then just walk on. Um, uh, show some thought about what you're doing and even if it may be uh, just to you busy work, please write down numbers. Please write down what you're thinking about and what you're doing. Okay, number two is kind of like the first introduction of uh, what a problem is. And so here, what the inside problem, what the little small answers that we have to get first before we add anything up is X times Y. Now, but looking up above here, what, what do you multiply when I multiply X times Y? Do I, you know, add these things up and um and geez, didn't come out very well at all do i add these things up and just multiply their results do i take 21 times 19 um or things like that and no no you don't take 21 times 19. what you do in this situation is you have to get little answers. So the last thing you do is add anything up. The very last thing you do is anything up. You have to multiply X times Y. And how you multiply X times Y is you take it element by element. So you're going to take four times one, one times eight, four times two, seven times one, and five times seven. So in essence, you're taking like X1, Y1 x2, y2, x3, y3, etc., etc., etc. So the, the number sets have to be the same size, and then you multiply the individual elements. So the small answers, the x times y's that you're going to be uh, summing in this case are 4 times 1, 1 times 8, 4 times 2, 7 times 1, and 5 times 7. Those are the numbers that you. Oh, my God, like normal parentheses. Um, those are the numbers that you are indeed adding up. So you are got those answers first, and then, as I said, the last thing you do is you actually add them up. Equal sign, not a negative. Okay. Number three, y squared. So we are dealing with the Y number set, 
and I am squaring each individual thing. So uh, I have to pick y squared. So the first answer uh, would be 1 squared, then 8 squared, 2 squared, 1 squared, 7 squared. So I square the numbers, aka multiply by themselves. And now that I have those inside answers, I have those answers, the y squared, then I can go ahead and add them up. All right, number four. Um, <clears throat> when you do number four, notice that the sum is just the y. All right, so the inside y. Uh, so the inside y's, this would be the sum of 1, uh, 8, 2, 1, and 7. Okay, those are the sums of y's. And then, so I'm going to sum these y's. to 19. And now that I know what the sum of y is, okay, what I have right now is the sum of y. Because notice how this square is not on the inside. So this is going to be the sum of y. squared. So aka this is 19 squared. Three sixty one. X plus Y's, um again I oh, I, I, I keep forgetting what X and Y are. Kind of keep referencing this thing. All right, <laughs> make my life a little bit easier here. All right, so now I'm, I I can see what the x times y or x and y are, and so here what we see is x plus y is the the small math problem. So. Uh, just like how we did the multiplication, we do the addition. So x, 4, y, 1, 4 plus 1 is 5. The second terms, 1 and 8. The third terms, 4 and 2. Fourth terms, 7 and 1. And then the last terms, 5 and 7. So I get the little mini inside answers first, and then I add them up. All right. <clears throat> Next, we have the summation of x squared. So you notice on the inside of the summation is x squared. So let's start with that. So this is going to be the summation of the x's squared. Uh, so 4, 1, 4, 7, and 5. So the summation of that x squared is the number 107. Okay, so that is the summation. And then uh, recall what this x sub 3 is. Again, it's not x to the third power, um, but it is the third element. So for instance, f4 is x1, that's x2, that's x3, that's x4, and that's 5. Uh, so x sub 3 is straight up the number 4. 
they're directly touching each other, so that implies multiplication. So this problem is actually four times 170. All right, um, in number seven, I have the numerator, the summation of xy from number two. I have the denominator answer from number one. So this is just in essence the sum of the top divided by the sum of the bottom. And so this is 62 divided by 21. All right. Great, interesting point here. Um, how I want answers. What do you do when you get answers that are crazy and things like that? Sometimes, rarely, but sometimes I'll ask for uh, fractions, but rarely. Most of the time, what I want is decimal answers, decimals. Um, and so this answer, very specifically, calculator is 2.952380952. All right. What I want decimals to, and how you're going to be recording them, is to the fourth decimal place. So I see that, that there's the decimal place right there between the two and the nine. So the fourth decimal place is to this three. Now, what you're going to be doing is rounding to the fourth decimal place. And for some of you, uh, uh, rounding is a task. Uh, you may have forgotten about it or things like that. Okay, so generally my answer is going to be 2.9523 because that is the fourth decimal place. Um, now, do I round this or not? And what does that mean? Um, what that all entails is this. The number beyond the fourth decimal place, aka this number eight, is the determining factor. If this number is big, which eight is big, what it does is it increases just, just purely this last number up one. So this three will become a four. If the eight would happen to be a small number, then I don't touch it and I leave the three as a three. So in this very specific case, my answer is 2.9523. Now before, or excuse me, as you were, sorry, 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 sorry. 2.9524, because it did round up. Now before I move on, like, let's talk about this rounding, not rounding idea, because again, it, this is a struggle, and yes, you must round every single number every single time you get an opportunity. All right, so let's let's just kind of hypothesize. Let's let's pretend here um, a different scenario. What makes a big number a big number, and what makes a small number a small number? Small numbers are zero through four. Big numbers are five through nine. Those are big numbers, or, or small and big numbers. So because eight, okay, is a big and this is small, because eight is a big number, it's five or above, that makes this a rounding number and thus this three becomes a four. Now if hypothetically um, this eight were, the number two, that were the number two or something like that, then I don't, it, it doesn't round the three. So I would record my answer as nine, five, two, three. Okay, so the only number that it affects is that last number. It doesn't affect any of these others. So don't do anything with those uh, as you go along. The only time that those numbers would be affected, okay, that those numbers would be affected is a situation where uh, this is the number nine. 
Okay, in a situation where this is the number nine and uh, this happens to be a rounding up number, this is the only time that things would be affected. So in the scenario that I have right here, uh, what this does is this eight does round that nine. So what's bigger than nine? 10. So what that means is, let's see if I can get one more color in here, let's go green, that this would be zero and then a one gets carried over to the next number. And so thus this, uh, the number right here would be the number three. So that would be 2.9530 if that last number were a nine. But other than that, it, it, all of these front numbers are not affected. Okay, and so that's kind of rounding. And so get in the habit of it. If you have any concerns on how to do it, you can personally email me, you can ask me during class, and I would be happy to teach you how to round, um, but it is going to be vitally important. Okay, moving forward. Number eight, there aren't any sub summations. We know what these subscripts are. Again, this is the second X. So looking at the X, um, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. This is Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5 kind of concept. So I see that the X2 is the number one. The Y3 is the number two. So this is the square root of one divided by two. So this is the square root of one divided by two. Aha. Take a look at my calculator that I have up on the screen right now. And notice how it, it might be easy to make a mistake when entering this into your calculator. Okay, because uh, what I'm looking to do is notice uh, on that the square root is completely on the inside. I'm taking the square root of one half. All right, so uh, a lot of people will take the square root of one half, or excuse me, square root of one divided by two, that's one half, and think that, oh yeah, 0.5 is my answer. It, it's all good. Where it's not the answer. Um, what the calculator recognizes when you enter the square root of one divided by two is it sees that this is the square root, just the one. Okay, so this is going to take the square root of one and then divide by two. So it sees it as this. Whoops, that's not what we want. We want the square root of one half. So what you need to do is you need to tell the calculator that I'm not, the, the square root begins here and I want it to end there. That's what I'm square rooting. I'm square rooting one half. And how you do that is parentheses. Parentheses. And so these buttons, uh, kind of above the eight and nine-ish, uh, those buttons right there are the buttons that you need to use. So here I'm going to enter the square root. And then because there's multiple things going inside the square root, I'm going to say it's going to be one half. So the calculator recognizes I'm not just square rooting the one, but I'm square rooting everything inside this parentheses. And there you go. All right, here we go. Uh, the summation of X is 21. I got that from number one. Summation of y, I don't know if I've ever done that problem. Or right, I kind of did it in number four. Kind of did it in number four. In number four, I uh, summed y, which came out to be 19. And then I squared it. Um, so I did have that. x sub 5, x sub 5 is the fifth number of x. 
which is the number five. That number X is the number five. And so that is my math problem. So my numerator is 21 times 19. My denominator is five. And so 399 divided by five is 79.8. All right, uh, last problem. Okay, the first problem is x squared y, the sum of x squared y. So I'll take that a bit at a time. So x squared, um, what I'm doing is I'm looking at my list. So x squared is um, 16 times y, 1. 16. Second one is x squared, one times eight, eight. Third number is uh, the four and the two, so the x squared is sixteen times y, two, thirty-two. The fourth number is the seven and the one, so x squared is the seven squared times y, y is one. So that's x squared times y. Last one is the 5 and the 7. So x squared, 5 squared times y, which is 7, is 175. So the very first bit is the 16, 8, 32, 49, and 175. So the first summation is 280. So that first number is 280. So that implies 280. I'll just, I'll just kind of keep it right here and understand what I'm talking about. Uh, next is the sum of xy. So again, if I did uh, problem number two correctly, that's the number 62. But notice that there's more to that bit. So what am I doing to the summation of 62? Well, I'm squaring it. So that comes out to be 3,844. And then what am I doing to that? Well, I'm dividing by 5. And so, in essence, the sum of xy, 62, squared, 3,844, uh, 3, divided by 5, came out to be 768.8. The denominator is straight up 4. Require a whole lot of math, and then note that it's all in a square root. Okay. So getting a complete answer to the numerator, uh, that is the 280 plus the 768.8. Again, uh, 280 plus 768.8. So the numerator comes out to be 1048.8. So this is 1048.8. That's the complete top, complete bottom, and then the square root. So the inside is going to be 1,048.8 divided by 4. Which is 
And then don't forget the square root. Everybody and their brother forgets about the square root. So the square root of 262.2 is 16, uh, 1926. Maybe. All right, I believe that is the entire assignment right there. Yep. Um, again, give it a good shot. Um, uh, if you don't have a calculator, make sure you're getting your calculator. You're talking to the school if you didn't pick one up. Uh, and uh, I believe you can be assigned one of the calculators that is similar to the one that I'm using up here on the board. Um, uh, so get your hands on one of those if you can, please. If you have any questions, uh, make sure you, uh, you ask during class and we will help uh, clarify any uh, confusions. Anyways, uh, that is the lesson. Have a good one, everybody. Uh, I will see you in class.